come to sparks of history where world history and Jewish history meet, we are very, very pleased to have with us today award-winning author Joshua Rubenstein. Mr. Rubenstein was on the staff of Amnesty International USA from 75 to 2012 and is currently a senior advisor to Amnesty. He is a longtime associate of the Davis Center for Russian and Eurasian Studies at Harvard University. He is the author of numerous books, including Soviet Dissidents, Their Struggle for Human Rights and Soviet Rights, The Life and Times of Ilya Ehrenberg. He is also the co-editor of Stalin's Secret Program, the post-war acquisition of the Jewish Anti-Fascist Committee, and received the National Jewish Book Award in the category of Eastern European Studies. He is also the co-editor of the KGB file on Andrei Sakharov. And today we will be discussing Leon Trotsky, A Revolutionary's Life, uh, which is part of the extremely important Jewish Live series at Yale University Press. Um, it's a great read, an easy read, uh, insightful. I purchased it on Amazon and uh, recommend uh, to all our listeners, just go on to Amazon, Google it, and uh, it's it's a great buy and a great read. Uh, your background and how you became interested in Trotsky. Well, let me say, I went to Columbia in the 1960s and made a decision that I was going to study a foreign language with a different alphabet. Because I came to Columbia with some grounding in French and Hebrew, and I wanted a new language at the university level, learning it in that kind of intense atmosphere. So I was going to study Chinese, but it scared me. So I decided instead to study Russian because it's Cyrillic alphabet. I liked reading Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. I had no idea what I would use it for. Um, after finishing Columbia, I actually lived in Israel for a year. I took a gap year after college. I did not intend to make Aliyah. I wanted to learn Hebrew. I needed a break from four years in New York and the anti-war movement and all the activity on campus. So um, when I got back to America after a year in Israel, um, I decided not to go to graduate school, not to go to law school. I wanted to be a writer. And I started writing uh, fiction, short stories, part of a novel. I didn't get very far. But then I started writing book reviews. And the only subject I could approach editors about was Soviet history because I'd studied Russian. And I'd been in a Russian study tour of the Soviet Union in the summer of 1970. So I started writing modest book reviews and short essays on various Soviet related topics and happened upon the Soviet dissident movement, the human rights movement, at a time when the Jewish immigration movement was also gaining a lot of attention and some success. When I was in Israel for that year, 71 to 72, I actually met a number of new Soviet uh, Olim to Israel, uh, new emigres to Israel from the former Soviet, from the Soviet Union. Uh, I could brush up on my Russian and appreciate what was happening. Um, and then I joined Amnesty International as a volunteer in the spring of 1975, and six months later was hired as an organizer. I stayed 37 years. So I began writing on Soviet issues, and my first book was on the Soviet dissident movement. It was the first general history of the Soviet human rights movement. That led to more books on a wider range of topics. Um, Trotsky had some interest to me, but I'm very grateful to my editors, including Anita Shapiro of the University of Tel Aviv here in Israel, who approached me to write the book. She liked my book on Ehrenberg. And she liked how I handled Ehrenberg's Jewish background and the conflicts he faced, the contradictions he faced in his career, his life over being a Soviet patriot, a Soviet journalist, a Russian novelist, and a Jew. During the Holocaust, during the Civil War in Russia, during the post-war period, during waves of anti-Semitism, there was something about Ehrenberg that I felt needed to be explored. And she liked how I did it. And that led to my book on Trotsky. Uh, 